Move on. Vigilant. Built on one of the oldest Minite Warjack chassis designs still in service, the Vigilant was among the first Warjacks to serve alongside the nascent Protectorate military. In those days, the Protectorate still outwardly adhered to the Signaran prohibition against the creation of steam jacks dedicated for war. Armed defensively, the Vigilant obeyed those prescriptions nearly to the letter while providing Protectorate Warcasters with a weapon of brutal simplicity. Its twin fist mounted shields make the Vigilant incredibly durable, able to withstand punishment that would cripple much heavier machines. The tremendous area covered by its towering shields provides nearly unassailable shelter from enemy artillery fire, making it a favorite among Warcasters. Indeed, more than one caster has been saved by the Vigilant armored presence. Warcasters also appreciate the Jack's low maintenance operation and utility. A Vigilant is an adept at carrying loads and supply trains as it is hurling enemy combatants about like ragged dolls. The relatively small Warjack's ability to maneuver nimbly around barricades and weather tremendous fire in vicious street fights made it crucial in the Protectorate's defense during the Siege of Seoul. After decades of service, the Vigilant is as dependable today as it was the day it first walked off the assembly line. Some Vigilants have been in continuous military service for more than 50 years. The Vigilants uncomplicated weaponry and cortex make it easy and inexpensive to manufacture, ensuring its place in the Protectorate's military for years to come. And sometimes, as mentioned, simplicity is best. This guy is running two tower shields, able to really shrug off most damage that you're swinging at it. Uh, its armor is incredibly hard to crack, and I've tried to crack it many times. And sustained firepower from, like, standard rifles aren't really going to do that much to this guy unless you hit, like, a, a cord or a pipe, which is, you know, pretty difficult, especially since these guys are pretty nimble, as mentioned. So, yeah, these guys incredibly dangerous. They're not the biggest uh, combat guys, but for defense and them getting into a spot that going to defend the people that they are around. These guys are really, really solid at that. Uh, let's go over their stats real quick. He is 9 feet 10 inches tall. Uh, his weight is 5 tons. His initial service date is 535 AR. His fuel load is 445 pounds. General use 5.5 hours. Combat use 70 minutes. And his armaments include his twin shield fists. His cortex was manufactured by the vassals of Meenath. And most likely he is probably still coming off the assembly lines now. Well, at least he may be. We don't know what's happening to them in Mark IV, but we will find out hopefully soon. But let's check out his Mark III to Mark IV changes. I doubt there is really any change because this guy is as simple as it comes in protection. But let's find out, shall we? And as always, let's start with his stat line. So he is a speed 5, he is a mat 6, he is a defense 12, he is an arm 17 before his shield fists kick in. And he has immunities to blast, so blast damage is one less damage die to this guy. Pretty simple, right? His abilities is what makes him a, a very useful guy if you're trying to protect very squishy targets around him. So he has girded while base to base with his model. Friendly models gain resistance to blast, so if they shoot him with a blast, they are girded, so he gives them a additional buff against blast damage as well. So if they're uber squishy, then it's only one damage die instead of two, unless of course it's boosted. And then he has roadblock. This model provides cover to friendly models as if as if they were an obstacle. So this model loses roadblock if it's incorporeal or knocked down. So basically, this guy provides cover to anybody that he's intervening from another person. So if a guy's standing behind him, or one of his own guys is standing behind him, he gives them cover as long as they're within one inch as per usual with the obstacle rules. So yeah, he makes them a lot harder to hit because his tower shields block over the top of him, which is a phenomenal for him protecting people behind him. Uh, his weapons are his shield fist, which is where his all of his cool stuff comes from. His mat on those is 6, his range on that is 1 inch, his power is 11, again he's not a melee combatant, he is a defensive combatant, um, and each shield gives him a plus 2 cumulative bonus, so his arm with his shields both active is 21, and when you give him additional spells for arm, as many 
protect your warcaster seem to have. Uh, you can get this guy up to some nigh impenetrable armor, up to like 24 armor. I believe that I've seen him up to in battles, and having 24 armor, unless you're hitting him with like a colossal, you're going to be hard pressed to do any real damage to him. So, yeah, he is a super good warcaster to have alongside uh, guys you want to not get blasted apart, and he is a great warjack to have in front of a warcaster who does not take damage well. So keep him in your list if that's what you need.